Hi, everyone. For those who don't know me, I am Jen Dirksen, and I'm the membership officer at the Port Moody Power and Sales Squadron. And I'd like to uh, spend the next hour and a half or so with you talking about Navionics. And I'd just like to be clear before I begin that I have no affiliation with Navionics or Garmin, but I'm a big fan. So let's show you some of the things that Navionics can do. So there are three applications. There's the mobile app, the chart plotter, and the web app. And for this uh, presentation, we will be focusing on the mobile and web app, but the chart plotter behaves similarly to the mobile app. So what are the differences between the mobile app and the web app? Well, the mobile app can do a lot. And these are just some of the tools that I like to use. The web app is very limited in functionality, but you know it's free after all. So since it has the ability to plan routes, it can be handy to plan your route ahead of time on your computer and then sync it to your mobile device. But of course, our mobile devices are mobile. So, you know, myself, I take my iPad with me just about everywhere I go, whether I'm at home or at the boat. So I use it to do all my planning, but the web app is there as well if you need it. So initially there were several mobile apps. Um, this was before Garmin purchased Navionics and there was a different app for every region globally. So f especially for people who, you know, uh, go blue water cruising and travel the world, they would need to have a different app wherever they went. And when Garmin purchased Navionics, they consolidated all of those old apps into one new app. And if you're wondering if you've got the old app or the new app, you can see uh, you can you know notice the difference. The word Navionics is curved in the new app, and the lightning bolts are less severe or less jagged. And the waves at the bottom are light blue instead of white. So um, once you get this new app installed, you can choose the region that you want to subscribe to that you're interested in, which makes it a lot more user friendly. So this is the new Navionics app on the Apple App Store. And there is a nice, uh, another nice feature that comes with this. Now your account is user-based, not device-based. So you can log into multiple mobile devices and have access to all of your routes, markers, and everything else. Before, if you had, let's say, an iPhone and an iPad, um, you would need to download it to one and then pay again and download it to the other. And now you just, you can install it wherever you want and you log in and your account is what drives, um, you know, what subscriptions you have. Now, one gotcha to be aware of is that all of your devices do need to have the same operating system, meaning they all need to be Apple or they all need to be Android. So if you have an iPhone and an iPad like me, then you only pay once for your subscription on both devices. So let's get online and go to the Navionics.com website. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share my other screen with you. And let's go ahead and share that. Okay, so now I'm sharing both of my screens. And so for the duration of this presentation, you will see a PowerPoint slide on the left and my secondary monitor on the right. And you can see that uh, we have logged into the Navionics website here. The uh, website is webapp.navionics.com. And if you don't remember that, you can just go to navionics.com and then click on Chart Viewer. All right, so let's create a route here. 
When I go to click the route button, I get two options. I can create a manual route in which I would need to enter in individual waypoints and Navionics will link them together for me. Or I can create an automatic route and let Navionics do the work. So I'm going to zoom in up here. And I'd like to start our journey from read point. Now I could either just click anywhere out here to start the route. That'll be my starting point. Or if I click up here, I will get a list of uh, you know different points of interest. So let's go to marinas. And since read point is uh, you know, the closest marina to where I'm zoomed into, you can see it shows up there at the top of the list. So we'll click that. And then we're going to go to, and I'm going to just select right on the chart here where we want to go to. Let's, um, let's go up the Indian arm here, and I'm going to zoom out. And we're going to go all the way up to Granite Falls. All right, so you can see here that it's given me some information right off the bat. It's going to be about 12 nautical miles to get there, take about an hour and a half, and we're going to use about nine gallons of fuel. How does it know that? Because I've entered in my boat settings before. So I've got a cruising speed of eight knots, so it knows how far it is. It knows how fast I'm going. Therefore, it knows how long it's going to take to get there. And it knows how much fuel I'm going to use to get there. Now, when we go to, head, go to hit save, it says, well, you haven't logged in yet. So we need to go ahead and log in. We could have also logged into our account in the top right corner there. So I'm going to go um, log into my Navionics account. OK, so now that I've logged in, you can see uh, um, that I can go ahead and save this. Now, before we do that, let's give this a better name than just some route number. So I'm going to call this. Um, read point marina to i'll just say um iron bay granite falls of course you can give whatever name you like and we will go ahead and save that great so now we have our route and when I now when I click on that route button, you see that it's it, the route is active. Um, as we start to move in our boat, we will be, you know, uh, it will update and we'll be able to see uh, our boat moving along that route. When you want to come back, you can of course hit the reverse button right there, and it will just start from the end and work your way back to the beginning. All right, let's go ahead and stop that. And now when I click on my route button, the route's no longer active and I can create a new route. Or now that I'm logged in, you can see that I have another option here called My Routes Archive. So when I click on that, I can see all the other routes that I've done, including this one that I just created. So now that's it for um, the web app. Let's go and um, I'll go on to our next slide here. And now let's talk about the mobile app interface. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on my iPad here. And that's one of the devices that I have Navionics on. All right, let's launch Navionics. OK, so here's the mobile app. And you can see it looks pretty similar to the web app. 
except um, it can do a whole lot more. So what I'd like to do um, before we dive into, you know, all the details of what Navionics can do, let's just kind of go around the perimeter and take a look at the um, at the interface. So the first thing is logging in. So when you first download your uh, your Navionics app, you're going to need to create an account and log in. And you can see I've set this up. I've got a picture of my boat there. And when you um, you know you've got the same boat settings that you uh, saw on the web app. And so I can put in all the information about my boat. Most important is the cruising speed and the fuel consumption. And that is going to update, you know, the information w when you create a route. And it'll tell you how long it takes to get there and how much fuel you'll use. All right. Next is routes. So just like you saw with the web app, we can click on our route button right here and we can create an automatic route, manual route, and my routes archive. Now, because I am logged into my account, voila, there is that Reed Point Marina to Iron Bay Granite Falls route that I just created. And when I click on that, you can see there is that entire route. So it automatically creates all those waypoints for us and puts it all together so that we can traverse that route. The next button there is our start button. And this is how you start a track. So a route is your plan to get there, wherever you're going. And your track is where you actually went. So when I click start, you'll see up in the top left corner there, um, it gives us a little box to indicate our speed and other things. If I click on that box, you get all the details. So, I mean, I'm just standing here at my house, so, uh, you know, I'm not going very fast. So my speed right there is listed, but of course on your boat that will update. We've got our course over ground and, you know, as you're moving, it'll update to show you your your true uh, course or your, your direction. And we've got, it, it'll update with our distance and our time at the bottom there. So this is kind of a boring track since we're not moving. Let me show you one that I've done before. This is a track um, my husband and I went and visited Lopez Island last year, um, last August. And um, you'll see that there's a little pin there. At the bottom, there's a little slider bar. And I can go ahead and play that. And you can visually see that pin, which represents our boat. You can see the speed and exactly where we went. So this is not a, a route that we planned. This is where our boat actually went. And you can see exactly what happened to get down into the marina. So routes are for planning and tracks are where you actually went. So I just mentioned that, you know, the menu button there. And if you click on the menu button, you get a lot of things. Not, you know, you get the tracks, which you just saw, the routes, which we looked at. So this is the same as clicking on my route archives. We've also got markers here. So markers are like favorites of, you know, places that you want to go or places that you've been. And when I click on them, you know, it brings it right up there. Or maybe we want to go to, uh, you know, Chatterbox Falls. Just click right there. Brings it right up instantly. And then the little blue box on the right-hand side, if I just click on that, I get the coordinates of that um, location. I can also click on the very top left button, which is my favorite, which is Boat 2. So if I simply click Boat 2, it's just like creating a route from my current location 
So instead of having to go through all the steps of, um, you know, finding the place I want to go, click on it, you know, where am I going from, you know, adding a route, all you need to do is just click boat to and it will automatically calculate that for you. Okay, it's coming up here. So um, that was kind of a, a far location, especially since I'm sitting on land right now, but you get the idea. Let's instead say, um, you know, we'll pick somewhere else here. Maybe Bedwell Bay. And again, boat two. So that boat two button is awesome. It's so handy. And it will go and figure out the course that you need to go to get there. So you can see I'm down here. I'm sitting at home. And obviously that's not going to work. We can see that dotted red line there to get me to the water. Um, but uh, if we were in the water, of course, we would have a, a nice um, route to get there. Okay, um, and I will come back and we'll look at some of these other things here. Um, we've got our, you know, downloading our maps and updating the maps, looking at the different options, weathers and tides. So we'll come back to that as we go. But let's just carry on with the interface here. So the next um, topic is, or the next thing on our on our um, interface is the measure tool. So I'm going to just kind of scroll up. Let's get up here into some water somewhere. And when I click on that measure button, which is in the bottom right corner, you can see that it goes and it adds two little pins. We've got a purple and a red pin. And you can just drag them wherever you want to go. The purple pin that has the, the uh, text on it, um, this is always your destination. So you can see that in this case, it would be going from Bowen Island down to um, Passage Island. If I grabbed the other one and kind of moved it around, you can see the opposite direction. So our heading is 300, 339 degrees, um, you know, which is kind of a northwesterly direction. And you can see exactly how far that is. This is really handy if, you know, let's say that you're heading somewhere and somebody calls you and says, you know, how far out are you? You just use the measure tool and you can tell them I'm 2.3 nautical miles. And I'll say, great, see you soon. Okay, so then our next ca carrying on with our interface here is the zoom button. Um, up at the top right so you can hit the plus to zoom in and the minus to zoom out personally i prefer just to pinch my fingers on the screen when i'm using a touch device like this the top left corner of the screen there is our search button and this is wonderful because this gives me the ability to go and find all kinds of different things um, i've got a bunch of markers that i've set up you can see that blue pin right in the middle of the screen there, that snug cove. And um, I've got a lot of different things that I've saved. I'll show you how to do that. It's really easy. Um, so we can save markers. I've got favorites, which is tides and currents um, that, that I want to save. We've got our various marinas. So it's super easy just to go and find anything you're looking for, click on it, and then say boat to. Another nice thing is the fuel stations. Um, let's say that I am headed over to Bowen Island and so I'd, I'd like to stop off and get fuel. So I've got a fuel station at Seawells Marina and I can click on that and you can see it again. It's telling me the diesel price in this case. Um, looks like somebody needs to update the gasoline price, but you can see the phone number, the address, etc. Down in the bottom left, you'll see it says last modified by Navionics user on the 19th of June, 2019. So you could really help out by going and updating uh, these, um, you know, if you happen to go there, you can just hit the edit button 
and now you can go and type in and enter in, you know, the info. So that would be great to help yourself and others to um, have the, uh, the right prices and the right information in there. But one of the things you can do, if you look up at the top, it says boat to marker, edit, which we just looked at, and share. So if you want to save this as a marker and you want this to be in your, you know, your, your marker favorites, you can click that. Or my favorite thing to do is just to hit boat to. If, if I'm headed there, I can just click boat to and it will take where I'm at and I'm, you know, currently not on my boat. I'm at my house. So <laughs> obviously we're going to have some trouble getting there uh, without, uh, you know, a waterway from my house. But you can see that it'll automatically create that route for you all the way. Then we have the camera tool. This is something that I think hardly ever gets used, but it's kind of cool. So when you click on the camera uh, button there, you can go take a picture of something. So I've got my iPad closed here, but you can see there, here's my uh, my screen. <laughs> uh, I've got my hand over top of it, that's why. There's my screen right there. Um, I'll just close up my iPad again. But So you can go and take a picture of anything and it will save in that particular location that you currently are. You can see I've, I have a couple um, that I saved um, earlier in the year. I did uh, this same webinar in January um, at Willie's and I took a, a quick picture down in the bottom left corner there. You can see those two pictures there. So uh, that was the first one. And then I've got a, another picture that I took as well. All right, so the next topic is markers. So, Looking on the left side of the screen there, that's my, my PowerPoint, um, you can see that the arrow is pointing to that little pin. And what that does is that puts a pin exactly where you are. I think of it almost like a man overboard. So if I click on that pin, that's where I currently am right now. You can see my red arrow and it puts a pin right there, okay? And uh, so that's that's saved now within my markers. Another way to add markers is when you click on something anywhere, you'll see a little crosshairs comes up. Okay, and on the right hand side, you'll see a question mark. If I click on that question mark, I get some options as to what I want to do with that location. And that second button there, that's where I can add a marker wherever I want to. So I could add a marker, give it a name. Um, I'll call this um, delete me. And you can also choose what kind of icon do you want to um, display at this marker. So you could add a pin or a dot or whatever you want. So, you know, whatever. I'll just say it's a green fish, let's say. I'll hit save. So now that's added to my markers. And when I go and do a search for my markers, you'll see it right there at the bottom. So there it is. So that's how you add markers. Okay, the next um, topic here is sonar chart. So looking at the bottom left corner of the screen again, when I click on that option there, I can either show a nautical chart or a sonar chart. So the default is the nautical chart. This is what the sonar chart looks like. So if we kind of zoom in in some of these areas here, actually I'll zoom out so you can really get an idea of what it looks like. So it's actually creating, um, you know, it shows the contours of the bottom of the water. And if I scroll up here, you can see that I get the option to change what the density is. So about halfway down the screen on the left there, you'll see it says sonar chart density. 
So I can either grab this little slider bar and move it up or down, or I can also just pick on that button and I can toggle up or down wherever I want to go. So there's low, medium, high, and very high. So if I choose very high, we'll see what that looks like. Okay, you can see how that's really blackened up the edges, and that's because there are so many contours, they're like blending together. So the low um, sonar chart means that the contours are 12 feet apart, medium is 6 feet apart, high is 3 feet apart, and then very high is 1 foot. So every one of these contours is one foot of depth. And uh, I don't know, I don't think you need to get that granular if you want to go and anchor somewhere or put down a trap, but it's there if you ever wanted to use that. The other thing is um, there is an option to go and use your own um, sonar chart live settings. So you can see about halfway down on the left, of my iPad, it says sonar chart live settings. And this is where you can actually hook up if you have your own uh, sonar depth finder, you can link that up to your, um, your, your Navionics and get a real time depth according to your depth sounder as opposed to one that, uh, you know, Navionics put together. Let's go set that back to the regular nautical chart. That's the way I like to see it. A little bit easier to read and not so um, cluttered. So this slide just shows what I've just showed you there. Um, so the contours are used for, for topography. And um, if you're looking at land, of course, the contours, you know, if you're looking at a mountain, for example, the contours show the varying um, heights of that mountain. In water, of course, the contours show the varying depths into the water. Okay, and the last part of our little tour around the interface is that bottom left button and um, looks like a little arrow, little pointer. When I click on it, what happens is it brings me right to my location, where I currently am. So it's kind of like a, you know, find where I am button. But it's more than that, because when I click on it again, it changes to some different ways of viewing this. So let me just zoom out here. So when I click on it again, it changes between how that arrow actually looks. This is like a set of headlights. I don't particularly like this because as I turn around, you can see that would make you pretty seasick fast. So I'm not gonna use that option. There's another option here that has a nice long line and this is the one I actually prefer because it gives you a nice path uh, as to where you're headed. So if you are, um, you know, going around uh, an island or something, you can use this line to kind of project where you're going to be going. All right, so let's dive in a little bit deeper here and talk about uh, some other things than the interface. So you do need to have data on your device to download the maps. Now that data could either be Wi-Fi or cellular, doesn't matter. What you would do is, you know, while you're at home and you're on Wi-Fi, you would download the maps that you want to use. And then once you go wherever you're going, you have all of the maps downloaded, ready to go. You know, for example, if you were heading up to Princess Luisa or somewhere that doesn't have cellular service, um, of course, you can still use almost everything, um, you know, using the downloaded maps. So as I zoom out here, you can see that I've got this nice highlighted area, and that's where we do all our boating here in the Sailor Sea. And um, if I zoom out even further, you can see there's a lot of, you know, there's the rest of the continent there. Um, and I don't boat there, so I'm not going to, 
use up the space on my iPad for those locations. But if I wanted to, let's just maybe go down to San Francisco and I'll just zoom in down there. If I zoom in a little bit, no problem. But the more I zoom in, once I get past a certain point, it will download the maps automatically for me. Now watch, you'll actually see it kind of um, highlight as I zoom in close enough and it will change the color of the screen. So now that it's brightened up, you can see that it has downloaded that region. So now this is, those maps are on my iPad. If I went down to San Francisco now, I would have all of this area on my device ready to be used. Okay. Now, if I change my mind and geez, I really don't want to have this downloaded on my iPad anymore. I'm running out of space and I want to get rid of it. Well, what I can do is I can hit the menu button and um, you see on the left side, it says download maps, update maps and delete maps. So first of all, if I want to download maps, I can do it just the way I did it, where I just zoom in close and it automatically downloads. Or if I click on download maps there, notice the green square. And I can move the square as big or as small as I want. I can also just you know zoom in and out wherever I want to go. I'm not going to make it too big here. Let's say I want to download everything inside of this square. So it's telling me down in the bottom left corner, I'm going to need 68 gigabytes to do that. Okay, download. And you can see that it's just going to go ahead and download those maps for me. And there we go. So now I've got all those maps downloaded, ready to go. If I uh, want to get rid of them, again, just hit menu and then delete maps. And now you'll see the square is red. So red is delete and green is uh, download. So now I'm gonna say delete everything inside that box and it says you're gonna delete this, okay. And we're gonna take that right back off of my iPad because I don't want to use up my space for that. Okay, so some of the things that you can do when you're offline, like if you've downloaded a uh, you know, a region, but then you're offline, you're out of cell service. What you can do is you can still do a lot of things. You can create and view your routes. You can, you know, create and view your markers. Um, you can search for marinas, markers, fuel, etc. all the things that we did. You can even look at uh, the tides and currents. So pretty much the only things that you can't do when you're offline is to check the weather because you have to be, you know, connected to get the weather live. Um, looking at the weather boy information, which I'm going to get to, and then also creating a track because it needs to know where you are for that, and um, uploading and downloading uh, maps. But other than that, you can do everything else. Okay, now routing. Now we've already spent some time. Um, looking at some different examples of how to create routes using the automatic tool where you say where you're going from and where you're going to and Navionics will um, create the route automatically for you. And we've already taken a look at our route archives um, area there where we can go and reuse routes that we've created in the past. Now, like I said, we can also use that boat to option. That does not give you the option to, to say what your starting point is, though. It assumes your starting point is where you are. So if you just use, if you just click on something and go to boat to, that left button, then it'll assume you're starting from where you are to wherever that location is. So in addition to um, doing searches for um, you know, marinas in different places. Of course, you can always use your markers that you've already set up, so all your favorites. So I can just use these markers to go and create my routes. All right, let's, um, let's talk about tides.
So tides are um, one of the things that are available when you're offline, which is wonderful uh, because I definitely look at the tides and currents a lot whenever we're out. So if you take a look right in the middle of my screen there, you can see a little blue uh, square. Little looks like a little um, uh, like a battery little thing. If I zoom in, you can see it right there. So that is a tide station, and that's at Point Atkinson. If I click on that, you can see up at the top there, it says Point Atkinson. And if I click that, it's going to bring up the tide information at that tide location. Uh, so down at the bottom, you'll see kind of a nice uh, sine wave that's uh, showing our tide coming in and out. And if you look, you'll see right now, it says it's 13.8 feet. And as I, oh, sorry, it was 13.75 feet and the, the high tide is 13.8. So we're almost there. We're literally like less than half an hour away to high tide. And as I move back and forth, you can see that little cursor there, that little circle, that's, um, you know, the tide at that time. So as I kind of move up, the tide is coming in. You see it's getting higher and higher. And if you look, you'll see that the, the depth of the water is actually updating real time. And as I move past this and down, you see the, the numbers changing and, and getting you know, less because the tide is going out. Another thing that you'll notice is that the color of the tide icon changed. So when the tide is coming in, it's blue. And when the tide is going out, it's red. And the reason is because in Navionics, um, they have done this great job of, of basically saying, if something is blue, then things are getting safer. And if it's red, then things are getting less safe. So, Less safe means less water beneath your boat and, you know, more chance of coming into contact with a rock. So as you're going down, 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 this is red, and then we hit low tide, and then it goes back to blue. And now we're getting deeper and safer, and our depths are going up. Now another thing is in the bottom left corner there, you'll see you can also click on the details button. So in addition to this nice visual image, you can get, you know, the the actual numbers uh, of when it's high tide, low tide, you know, the the sun and the moon um, rising and setting, and so you can uh, clearly see exactly when high and low tide is. Also down in the very bottom left corner, you'll see the date. So that has um, the date of where I've moved my little cursor there. So you can see I can move back. It says Tuesday, 20th of October, and I can go all the way up to Friday. So the way that it works is it the tides are displayed over three days. So it shows you 12 hours back and two, you know, so half a day back and two and a half days forward. Now, if I want to show some, you know, if I'm interested to see what the tides are going to be next month, because I'm going out next month, I can just click on that and I can set the, the date to any date that I want. So let's go down here and maybe choose November. And now you can see exactly what the tides are going to do for those three days. Oh, additionally, what you can do is um, you can click on this little gold star. See the star there? So it, when you click on that star, it turns it gold, and then that puts that into your favorites. And then when I go and do a search and click on my favorites, I can see there's Point Atkinson right there. Another way that you can get to the tides is let me just zoom way out here. And if I click any old place, 
on the left hand side there you'll see a little weather button let me just do that again here so i just click any old place and on the left side of the little um, crosshairs you see a little sun and a cloud when i click that what that's going to do is that's going to tell me what the weather is at that location that I picked. So you see it brings up Strait of Georgia and I can see the weather. It's, it's using um, the weather network. And if I scroll down, I can see exactly what the tides are right then and there, right in the middle of the screen there. You can see that blue 14 and then It'll be high tide somewhere between 8 and 9. We already know that it was uh, 8.02, I think it was, right? And then it's going to turn red because the tide's going to be going out. But if you look at the very bottom of that screen there, you'll see it says wind, buoys, tides, and currents. So if I click on tides there, that third button there from the left, you'll see it actually displays all of the tide um, you know markers where I'm zoomed into so then I can go pick any of these and see okay well what's going to be happening at Deep Cove click there and it brings up the same nice screen that shows me what's happening there and again I can click on the details and get all that info Okay, so you can you can get the tides multiple ways. If you happen to see that little blue or red, you know, uh, tide icon there, you can just click on it, or you can click any place and go to the the um, the weather button there. You can see now I've clicked over here in the Indian Arm, and I can see again what's happening with the tides and I can click on that Tides button at the bottom there to get my complete list. Okay, when you have Tides, of course, you have Currents. So Currents um, are also displayed the same way as Tides. We've got half a day back and two and a half days forward. Now, um, Currents um, can be either flooding or ebbing, right? So the, the currents are either uh, moving upstream or moving downstream. So what we can do is, um, just like we did with our tides, if you happen to see uh, an arrow, see that blue arrow right in the middle of the screen there? That is a current icon. So if I click on that, it tells me second narrows. I'll just do that again. So similarly to the tides, we get a nice um, chart at the bottom of our, of our device there that's showing what the current is doing. So right now at this very moment in time, you look on the left side of the screen at 7.51 p.m., the current is 0 0.78 knots and it's flooding. Why is it flooding? It's heading upstream. And the it's blue because the current is getting less. So again, blue means safer, red means less safe. So the current was higher. If we kind of scroll back a little bit here at the bottom, we can see at 6.14 p.m. we were at our maximum flood. And as the evening went on, it got slower and slower. And if we want to know exactly when that zero, um, that zero current is going to be, we can click on details and we can see, uh, let's see here, slack tide at 8.33 p.m. You guys see that? So it says October 20th and it's the second from the bottom, slack, 8.33 p.m. So then we will have zero um, current. And then the current will start moving the other direction, right? So now it's going to be ebbing. And you can see that now that number up there is red. Why is it red? Because it's getting less safe. It's The water is moving faster and faster. 
and it's going to keep going until it gets to the maximum ebb, which will be at 12:28 a.m. tonight. And it'll it's going to continue ebbing, but it's going to be getting safer and safer until again it goes to zero, and then the other direction. So with tides, you either have the tides coming in or the tides going out. So it's you know blue and red is uh, pretty straightforward. With currents, you've got it either flooding or ebbing, and it's either get it's either flooding faster or flooding slower or ebbing faster or ebbing, ebbing slower. So there's kind of four things to think about there, right? So uh, again, that is currents. And the same way that you can just click on an arrow there, you can go and get that. Or I can, again, just click on my little weather button there on the left and down about halfway down on your screen there, you can see what the current is doing. So you can see somewhere between 8 and 9 p.m. the current will be zero, but we already knew exactly what that would be because we clicked on the arrow and got that precise number. And down at the very bottom, just like we how we have the tides uh, that show the tides all through this region, we can also look at the currents all through this region. Now there will be less currents because, you know, currents typically happen uh, you know, where things get narrow and uh, things, you know, tend to speed up and slow down. Out in big bodies of water, you won't get much current. But you can see clearly, uh, you know, some of these areas here. Let's take a look at Active Pass. I'll open that up. So another thing to think about is to know clearly which way is, um, you know, which way is flooding and which way is ebbing. Up in the Burrard Inlet, it's pretty easy. You know, heading eastbound toward Port Moody, that's the flooding direction because it's it's an inlet. You know, the water is going to flow in there, and so that is going to be the upstream direction, meaning the return direction. Now, here in Active Pass, it's not so obvious which way upstream is, and we all remember that... Uh, you know that saying, red right return. So when you're returning, you keep your red boy on your right side. So which way is returning? Well, returning is always the direction that the flood goes. So the flood is returning and the ebb is not returning. Let's go to the next slide here. Um, Okay, so here we go. So again, you know, remembering red right return. When you are returning, you are heading upstream. You are heading in the direction of the flood. So on our little chart at the bottom of uh, our, our Navionics app, flood is anything that is above that, you know, zero current line. And ebbing is anything below that zero current line. Meaning, if you just look to the left over here on the PowerPoint, um, so here, so th this is the second narrows where we just were. And you can see that as we go above the line, that arrow is pointing east, meaning toward Port Moody. So it's flooding. That's the uh, arc that goes above the zero line. It's flooding when it's heading east. And then the curve goes below that zero line when it's ebbing. In other words, east is flooding, west is ebbing. Now things can, you know, it's pretty obvious there. But let me just show you an uh, active pass because this is not an easy example, right? It's a current between two islands. So which way is actually flooding? Because we're here on the west coast of North America, in general, our uh, our flood direction is actually north. So if in doubt, north is the flood direction, unless, of course, you're in a, um, you know, an inlet 
like we just saw up in Vancouver Harbor and the Burrard Inlet. So here, now how can we verify that? Well, there's a couple of things. First of all, if you zoom in really close, you'll see some little pink arrows down here. And these pink arrows actually indicate the flood and ebb. So you'll see that there's an arrow that has little feathers on the end, those little kind of tassels. I always remember feather equals flood. So the direction of the arrow with the feather is the flood, i.e. in the northeasterly direction in this case. That means that the ebb is the other one, which is the southwesterly direction. And it has a maximum uh, speed that's throughout the whole year. The maximum current is going to be eight knots. Now, if you're not sure, you can always just click on that little icon there right in the middle of the arrow where it says tidal stream. And if I click on that, it says there's the tidal stream and it's the flood direction. And if I click on the other one here, okay, the other one without the feather is the ebb direction. So that's one way you can do it. Now, if you don't find that little pink arrow there to help you out, my favorite way to do it is actually just how I explained it earlier, is by using our current arrow there to indicate which, which way the, the current is flowing. So if I click on that, and again, let's go to active pass this time. So again, you can see the, the little arrows down there, right down here. So these arrows, this indicates the flood direction because it's above the line. And then this would be the ebb direction because it's below the line. So what that means is if I move my cursor over, to above the line, that is the flood direction, meaning northerly. And then the ebb direction would be southerly. Okay, so I hope that that helps. And, um, you know, remember red rate return. So red rate return means um, green left return, right? Uh, so you can see that there's a green um right here we have a green uh beacon right here so you want to keep that on your left side when you're returning and you keep on your uh, your red boys on your right side when returning okay so that is currents now let's talk about weather so i already kind of gave a a little preview hint about this but wherever you click if you click on that weather button which is the left button on the crosshairs the little sun and the cloud um, we can see um, right at the top there it says uh, you know today was a, a sunny day um, and it shows that the sun rose at 7.43 a.m. and it set at 6.10 p.m. and then the moon over on the other side there. And it shows us uh, the pressure and the temperature. So this is using the weather network and uh, it includes an hourly forecast and also shows you the temperature. It does a wind direction, which you can see Below the sun, you'll see, you know, right now, it's, it shows a little moon with clouds. So that's what's happening right now. And below that is a little wind um, arrow there that shows three knots. And as we scroll across, you can see, oh, it's going to be a bit windier at 2, 3 a.m., 10 knots. Okay. This definitely does not replace a dedicated uh, wind app like Predict Wind or Wind Alert or Windy. Um, so, but it, it's there, so you can, uh, you know, use that, but I would definitely recommend using a, um, a dedicated wind app, not, not, um, Navionics for wind. So that is, uh, the weather. And again, you also get those additional, um, you know, there's actually a wind app down below there. I don't use it again. I just use predict wind. 
Um, and, but then there's the uh, tides and currents, which we talked about, and also uh, buoys, which we'll, we'll get to soon. Oh, perfect timing, weather buoys. Okay, so weather buoys, um, these are super helpful. Now, a forecast is a prediction, right? You're predicting what the weather is going to be. You don't know for sure, but you know a, a meteorologist will look at varying things like pressure and different things and be able to understand you know how a front is going to come in. What the weather boys are is they are actually showing real time, like within a couple of hours, uh, what is happening where they are. And uh, let's uh, click on our boys there, which is that second button from the bottom. And when I click on that, you're going to see it's going to show me all of the weather boys in this area. Most of them are down in the U.S., down in the San Juans and Puget Sound. But you see there is one um, right up over here. Um, right between Seashelt and uh, Gabriola Island. So let's just kind of zoom in up there and I'm going to click on it and that is called Halibut Bank. So that's all you need to remember is Halibut Bank and when you click on that little blue square it gives you the information as to what's actually happening you can see um, at the bottom there, it says Tuesday, uh, October 20th. That's today, 7 o'clock. So that was about an hour ago. And it updates every couple of hours. So right now, or an hour ago, it was, this is not a prediction, this is actual data. So the uh, wind was coming in. It was a, a northwesterly wind, 8 knots. The height of the waves were zero feet, which is good. Um, and you can see the uh, pressure there. And, uh, and then it also shows you the air temperature and the sea surface temperature. So again, this is real time. If you are heading across the strait, if you are heading up to uh, the Sunshine Coast, you definitely want to check out Halibut Bank uh, Boy and see what's happening out there real time. Okay, so latitude and longitude. So now whether you are, you know, looking for something in particular and you have the coordinates or if, if you're in an emergency situation and you need to tell a rescuer where you are, you can use latitude and longitude to, uh, to get there. So you know, if if you want to say where you are, let's say you're right here. Okay, I'll just click. Uh, hold on a second. I'm still in the weather, boys. Okay. So I just click, go to that question mark, and you notice up at the top it says selected location. So that is the actual coordinates at that point. And if I click on that, it says copied to clipboard. And now I can do whatever I want with it. You know, maybe I'll send a quick email. Um, send it to whoever. And I'll put in uh, the coordinates. Just paste that right in there. And there you go. Okay, and send that to whoever needs to know where I am. So the other thing that you can do is, um, I'll just click on this again, and you'll see right next to that selected location. So I can either click right on top of that and copy that to the clipboard, or I can share it, and you'll see a little um, square with an arrow. And if I click on that, it will actually create a link. You can see it says boating.page.link, and then, you know. So if I copy that, or I can just hit the mail or you know, text message or whatever directly, you can see it comes up and it says it gives me that boating link. And then if somebody, I send that to somebody, they click on it, it will open up in their Navionics 
and it'll bring them right to that spot so they'll know how to find me if you know you know your friend tells you hey i'm at this coordinate well how do you get there well again the search command up at the top corner there that we already looked at but if you see up in the top there it says lat long if i click on that i can go and put in just by using these little slider thingies and go and put in whatever latitude and longitude i'm i want to go to and then click show on map and it'll go put that there okay obviously i found a spot on land but you see how that works and then once you pick where you're going you click on the blue button and boat to bing bang boom you're on your way all right so that's latitude and longitude So now I've kind of been giving some uh, hints as we go with, um, you know, whenever you click on on uh, anything in Navionics, you get that nice crosshairs that shows the weather button on the left, the question mark on the right, and then some instant information up at the top. So what we can do, let me just, uh, let's go in here into Vancouver Harbor. Whatever I happen to click on, doesn't matter what it is, I will get this crosshair come up. So if I just click out here in the water, you can see again, there's on the left, the uh, weather on the right was the question mark and on the top was some information. So if I click, we already saw what happens when I click on weather. If I hit question mark, there's our coordinates the distance from where I currently am, 14 nautical miles. And then we've got all of our handy things there again, boat to, add a marker, check what the weather is there. And then down below, you can see some additional information. It says depth, and it has a pink square that says Vancouver, because this is within the Vancouver limits. Okay, that was just a spot in the water. What if I actually click on something? How about this... Um, this boy here or this beacon. So if I just move my cursor right on top of that, oops, let me do that again, and hit the question mark. So again, it's giving me the G, the uh, coordinates and all the information, boat to, marker, weather. And then down below, it's got all the information regarding that thing I clicked on. So you can see um, the very top one there, it says lateral beacon. That's like the default or the instant information that you want. And if I click on that, it gives me the information about that lateral beacon, okay? It says red lateral beacon, shaped tower, having quick red flashing light with a period of one second and a range of 10.9 miles. So that is the red beacon that's right at the edge of um, uh, Stanley Park as you're coming around the corner and heading into Coal Harbor. And then down below that, we've got all the other info around that location, including the depth, there's a cable under the water and some other things there. Now, if I click the question mark, I get everything. If I click on that again and hit the top where it says lateral beacon, it gives me that instant information, kind of the default about that location. So, you know, before when I showed you, it was right at the top. So that's like the number one thing that you want when you click there. So here you go. Um, whereas if you hit the question mark, you get all the information. If you click on, uh, you know, maybe one of these uh, active captain things, there's a little, see that little red box there? If I click there, it says Chevron Legacy Fuel. So someone has added that. This is uh, a person has added this and it's got the information there. And again, there's the default right at the top. So if I just click on that again and hit the top um, button there, it gives me that information. So somebody updated this on May 8th, 2020. And there's the coordinates and they put in all the information there. You can do this too, you know, you can, so this is Captain Nico who did this. <laughs> and um, 
you can see right here. So then we've also got uh, the, you know, the Navionics added fuel uh, icon there. And if I click there, that's like the official one. And you can see there's the price of gas and diesel. And um, it's got some reviews. So I can click on those reviews and, oh, somebody didn't like it there, but others did. So anyway, this is pretty handy to be able to go and find things. And then, of course, I keep reiterating this, that boat to button, it's my fave. You just click on boat to, wherever you are, it's going to boat to that spot. Another thing that, you know, and I spend a lot of time looking at Navionics and just checking different things out. So, you know, you click on, you know, what's this caution here? Click on it. What is it? Oh, the sector lights are, are not to be used east of Brockton Point. Okay. Um, you can see that there's these little green, what look like cameras. That's exactly what they are. If I click on that, it, it says Berry Coast Yacht Club. Let's click on that. And it gives you this beautiful panoramic photo from that location. Um, how about this one right here, Harbor Ferries? Okay, so that's looking more at, um, you know, the VRC. I use this all the time. I just go and click at different photos and get a nice aerial shot of where, you know, we're heading to and can kind of get a better understanding of what the marina looks like and what, you know, what we're going to see when we get there. Um, and then, of course, if you hit the question mark, the first thing on the list there is panoramic photo. So that's, you know, like the most important information. And then you get the other info down below as well. So that's the instant info and the question mark. I love, love, love this. And I, I can't tell you how many times or how many hours I've spent just sitting around and going like, what's this? And what's that? And, oh, there's the first narrows. Let's see. There's a landscape bridge. Okay. Uh, oh, VHF channel 12. Okay. Monitor that as we go through there. The, the height is 200 feet. Okay. I don't think any of us are going to have any problem with that. Um, fantastic. So use that question mark, use that instant info, the top button, and you can get all kinds of info about whatever it is you're clicking on. So again, here's, um, some examples of that. We've got a, a beacon, we've got a photo and, you know, panoramic photo or just about anything that you want to click on. You know, if you're coming around the corner out of, um, the first narrows bridge out of Lionsgate, and then you're going to head down to false Creek, you come across, um, this, uh, this big, um, um, Cardinal boy here, and it's a West Cardinal boy. And you can tell that because of the colors and the shape of it. And if you look, you can see, gee, I guess that's a good idea to stay left of it because to the east of it, um, it looks pretty shallow. And again, if you click on it, you can see it's QC. So that's the, uh, the label for it. And it sure enough, it says it's uh, yellow, black, yellow. That's the YBY. It's a quick flash. So nine flashes every 15 seconds. And it's, uh, you know, stay west. Um, and it, you can see it from 6.5 nautical miles away. There you go. West Cardinal Boy. So I would recommend to just click on things, see what they are, go to the question mark and check it out. So now let's talk about some of the advanced map options. So again, if we click on that menu button and we scroll up, you'll see it, uh, it says map options just below where we looked before when we were downloading maps and deleting maps. So just below that, it says map options. When I click there, this is also where we can turn on our, our sonar chart if we want to. But we've got all kinds of other things. We can, you know, turn on satellite. What that does is all the land kind of gets a satellite view of uh, what it really looks like. You can actually see the roads and everything as opposed to just a big yellow blob. Personally, 
I like the yellow blob because it uses, you know, it. well, I don't think it uses less data, but it's faster for sure. When you click on the no overlay, because you don't care what's happening on the land when you're on the water anyway, do you? You just want to know what the depths are in the water and what's happening there. As we scroll up here, we can see we can change the orientation of our of our uh, routes. So I like to use north up myself. So you know north is always up. I know some people like to use um, course up. So whatever direction your course is, if I'm heading south, then you know I can kind of look in the southbound direction there. So. But those are uh, options are there if you want to change them. And um, scrolling down, we have uh, different ways that we can display the water. So let's just zoom in nice and close here in Bedwell Bay. You can see as I move this out, I'm actually making the water area here smaller because I don't want to get too close to the land, right? And if I move that out this way, we go back to where it should be. I'm just going to leave that at zero. I want to know what's really happening, not some, you know, fudged uh, added uh, extra land. And then below that, we can see that we can change um, what our, our 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 shallow area and our depth shading looks like. So if I just let's um, come down here. This is where we usually anchor in Bedwell Bay. So you can see that there's like these little red dots. So we can change that depth and basically say that that's going to be, you know, some other number. Um, it's not changing the the chart at all. It just changes the contour, like the the visual. And I just leave it all at the default. You can see it's set to 30 feet. So if it's 30 feet or less. I get these red dots. Okay, that's kind of a, just a visual to tell me, hey, you're in 30 feet or less of water, or you could change that to whatever you want. The depth shading, which you can see, like that dark blue, medium blue, light blue, and you know, as it goes up, you can change that as well. And you know, let's zoom out a bit more here. So you can change how far out you want that to go. The lower this number is, the more white you're going to see on your screen. And as you move that up, you'll see, you know, more uh, more color there to just indicate what the depth is. And the same thing with the depth contours. Let's go somewhere where there's actually some depth, uh, where we see some contours. So as I move this down, um, we'll we'll actually see that those contours kind of go away. I just leave everything at the default personally, but those options are there if you wanted to change them. Okay, and then um, we also have the community edits and the active captain community. So I'm gonna show you that next. So right down at the very bottom on the left, you'll see it says community edits and active captain community. So Garmin created active captain years ago and it is, uh, you know, you need an additional login. You have to kind of, you know, set it up. And then you can go and you can add in marinas, anchorages, and other things. In the meantime, um, at, or at the same time, Navionics, before they were purchased by Garmin, also had that, but they called it community edits. Uh, they're very similar, but the icons do look a little bit different. Um, if you look in the kind of top right corner of the PowerPoint, you'll see that the kind of more squarish um, bubble icons, those are Active Captain. Um, and then the smaller uh, icons that have the little either a green plus or a blue ellipsis, those are community edits. So let me just show you that. Let's take a look up here in Cozy Cove here. So you can see when I'm kind of zoomed out, you see how there's these like kind of uh, maroon colored or reddish color uh, square dots. 
Well, that's telling me that there's something there, but I haven't zoomed in far enough. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. And then I can see, oh, well, what's this? Let's use our question mark. What is that? Oh, it's a UBC Sea Lion Research Boy. Okay. And there's the website if you wanted to contact them. So that's a, a research boy. What else is there? Well, see that little hiker guy? Let's click on that one. What is that? Oh, this is an access point. There's a trail there. Okay. What else have we got here? There's a little circle here. What's that? Oh, it says beach. Okay. <laughs> Somebody actually labeled beach where there's a beach. Um, so, oh, and over here, there's a wreck. You can see that wreck right there. So that's an important thing. It's pretty close to the shore, though. I don't think anybody would get too close to it. So these are community edits. And then you see that uh, that um, orange colored uh, hazard. I'll just zoom in a little bit there. See that? So that would be active captain. So that's just the difference between what they look like. They kind of are the same, you know, have the same um, uh, purpose, but you get to them different. So the Navionics uh, community edits. You just do right here in Navionics, Active Captain. And then the, you would need to log in separately using your Garmin account. So there's this active community. It says shoaling. This area has less water than the charts show. Okay. There actually is a little reef there called the Charles Reef. Okay. So that is um, community captain. edits. Um, now, let's go and make one. Let's actually go and add a community edit. So last year, we were at um, Snug Cove over on Bowen Island. And my little dog, Lily, and I, we always like to go out exploring on the dinghy. And we saw this sunken sailboat. I didn't add it to Navionics, but I'm going to do it now. Okay? So here's how you do it. So let's go over to the bay where we were which was Mannion Bay, right next door to Snug Cove. And I'm going to just zoom in, keep zooming in here. And it was actually right about here, right where my cursor, I just put that. So that's where that sailboat was. I'm going to go and add that. Now, normally you would do it live. I mean, like when you're there so that you uh, get it in the exact right spot. I can always delete this afterward, but I'm going to just go ahead and click on this. Go to my question marks. And here's the final thing. So we've talked about boat two. We've talked about adding a marker. We've talked about weather. But that fourth button there is add. And that's where I can add stuff. So I can add, you know, generic info like a uh, trailhead, you know, a hike or a diving spot or something or a spot to go fishing. Um, we can add a wreck, which is what we're going to do. We can also add boys and you can go and, you know, add in a boy if you see one that's not there. And same thing with beacons and lights, shops and repairs, you know, so you can go and add in a restaurant or whatever it is that you want to add. Same thing with ports and marinas and anchorages. So let's go and add a, a wreck. And here's our options. Um, we can add rocks, just an obstruction, just in general. You can add a wreck, either non-dangerous or dangerous. Um, wreck emerging. That's In this case, this is definitely emerging. You can see it poking out of the water. And, uh, you know, a few other things there pylon, dam, etc. Let's add rec emerging. So I'm going to click on that. And now I can go put this in. Um, what's it called? I don't know. I don't see a name on the sailboat, but I'm just going to call it Mannion. Whoops. Mannion Bay uh, Sailboat. Information. Um, 
partially sunken partially sunken or stuck in the sand the value of the sounding I remember it was about 12 feet 12 feet and um, that's it add so I have just added this sunken sailboat right there it might take a few minutes but you will see that when you look at your Navionics you'll see that update there okay it won't be instantaneous but it will it will happen and I'll show you something else so this past summer we were in a Soyuz and let me log in or just zoom in down here and there's um, a couple of boys right at the end of Haynes Point, but they weren't here on the chart. So we got really close. You can see again the, that little those maroon little two dots there. And as I zoom in closer and closer, there's those two boys that I added. So we've got an East Cardinal boy and a West Cardinal boy because you have to go between them. That's actually uh, quite shallow on both sides, but there's like a dredge channel between them. So we just went right in there and I put them both in there. And so if anybody is looking at Navionics on uh, on the lake there in a, in a Soyuz, they're going to see those two boys. Okay, so we have added our our community edit there. Now, what I would like to do, we have I know we've only got one minute to go, um, but I would love to just spend uh, one or two minutes just talking a little bit about the Port Moody Squadron. I know that many of you are members, and uh, but some of you aren't. So if you'll do me the honor of just uh, giving me one more minute. Um, so the Port Moody Power and Sail Squadron is a boating club, and I am a member, and I'm also the membership officer. And there's a ton of uh, financial benefits if you would like to join us. You get discounts at uh, many different uh, stores. And we have, um, you know, a lot of cruises. We go all over the place. These are just a, a few. Uh, we, we go to multiple locations every year. And we even have um, our own private concert every year in August over in Bedwell Bay. Uh, with a wonderful band called Buddy and the Scarecrow. So we get a, 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 a front row seat there. We also, um, you know, we want to give back to the community and we uh, regularly go and clean up the shoreline and we're involved in several uh, charities, uh, including um, Variety Children's Charity with a, a program called Boat for Hope. And we have a Remembrance Day ceremony that we do every year. Unfortunately, this year, because of uh, coronavirus, uh, we won't be getting together, but we will have a Remembrance Day live stream on YouTube. So you can uh, take a quick snapshot of that link or use your uh, your QR scanner and, and, and grab that, or just go to YouTube and, and do a search for Port Moody Power and Sail Squadron and you'll find it there. Um, it's going to be a wonderful ceremony. And uh, we also, uh, uh, every year we love to dress up our boats and, and cruise around uh, throughout the Burrard Inlet. So, you know, if you would like to join us, you can save a lot of money. You can go on a lot of fun cruises and you can meet tons of friends. So if you're interested, um, please uh, just email me at membership at portmoodypss.com. Well, thank you all for uh, for attending. Um, I really appreciate you coming on, and um, I hope you all have a wonderful evening, and um, see you next time.